what? You deserve a break today. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Lim Toys Lemini Ahab, the Tiger Stripe S++ version. Now, this is an unlicensed product, so you won't see things like I'm just randomly calling out a video game, Metal Gear Solid, or Solid Snake, or Big Boss, or things like that. And while this was supposed to come out late last year, things happen. You know how it goes. On top of Lim Toys saying that they got way more orders than they were expecting, you know how 2020s went so far. So there were delays. But like most things anymore, I just pre-order stuff and then I try to forget about it. And then when I do get that shipping notice, it's a surprise. It's a, I, oh, okay, cool. I had forgotten about this. Looking at the package, there's a quality to it. Even though they don't put a lot of graphics or anything, mostly because they probably can't, they do use this picture right up here up front. And there's something fancy about being so minimalistic with your packaging, you know? You see Ahab, Tiger Stripe, S++ version, Phantom Legend, Full Vengeance, and then that pretty much repeats all the way around the package, except on the back. Here we have a lot of notices, choking hazard, small parts, don't put them in your mouth, and then some links and some logos for Lim Toys themselves. But let's see what happens when we pull all this out. Oh, what is going on here? Oh, see, it's been so long that I've almost forgotten what comes with this figure. Here's the box you fold up. There's the scarf top thing cut out of a soldier with the... And then the figure and accessories is packed tight. Look at all that stuff. And even the weapons are trade up nice, separated. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, now that's cool. Okay, they gave you a lid for each of these insert trays. So if you want to keep the accessories separated or, you know, well, together, in a tub, in a bin somewhere. You can just leave them in here. I like that. That's thinking ahead. Somebody tried to take out Ahab. I'll save you. Getting the figure out of the package. Oh, I really do love it, but there are some frustrating points here. First off, if you don't have a pair of tweezers of some kind, go buy a pair before you even open up this box. There's going to be tiny little pieces and accessories and getting things out of places. And oh, this piece of shrapnel up here is the devil. But looking at the overall figure first, I don't know what the base body is under here. When it comes to figures with clothes on, I hate taking them off because putting clothes back on is one of my worst nightmares. I just can't do it. I get frustrated and <laughs> if it comes from the factory looking nice like this, it's gonna stay on. And we'll talk about the articulation when we get to that point, but what you can see of the base body, it's done really nice. I mean, look at that scar running down on top of kind of a skin texture and the musculature. I mean, we're talking about, uh, what, 10% of the figure, but what you can see is nice. But then for the other arm, of course, we have this robot look and even that, Oh, it's done really great. But the other 90% of the figure is covered in cloth and that is all done really, really well. You have all these straps running around and a lot of the times in the six inch scale, they look too big, but even the buckles scaled down. It's almost like somebody took some actual cloth and straps and buckles and pouches and canteens and just whoosh, there's some pin particles involved here. Okay, I will say that the stitching is a bit large and messes with that illusion of a tiny character, but hell, it's better than I've seen from some of the big companies. This knee pad running around here is a rubbery top substance. Well, leathery, I guess I should say. But they did do a fantastic job of the tiger stripe camo itself. I mean, it is scaled down perfectly. The patch on the left shoulder on this, is this, yeah, this is a separate piece. I had messed with that yet. And then the two D's on the right arm. And even the sleeves look like they've been rolled up. The canteen is even a separately clipped piece on there. Again, you have to get some tweezers, hold that belt back in there, and then snap that back on because it's just a little itty bitty clip. Now, like most figures that use soft goods, the clothing adds a slight bulk to it. And you can see it up here, how the collar kind of rides up. It swallows the head up just a bit, but you can adjust this. There is a piece under there. If you leave it up high, it helps counteract that look. And it's snug, but it's not as tight as if you push it all the way down. But ooh, looking at the head, the scars, the skin, the paint, the hair sculpt. Oh man, that is so good. The hair, a slight wash to bring out that extra detail. It just, I don't know. This is just done really well for this scale. The eye has a slight dead stare to it, but 
at the same time. This game came out five... Oh, wait, is this related to some game of some kind? I don't know. But if this were based on a game, it's now five years old. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh, there's that piece of shrapnel. There's even an undershirt. But like I just showed, the head comes off, and you can see what's under there. Oh, there's a ball at the bottom of the neck, and then that comes up to a dumbbell in the top of the neck. Actually, this cap comes off too. You can see it better. And with that, you can look up, can look down. Oh, there's the tilt. Swivel. The shoulder has a butterfly joint forward and back. Or is that a dumbbell joint at the shoulder? I don't know. There's some up and down too. That hinges up past 90. Rotates around. It starts bunching up about right there. There is a swivel up in there somewhere. There is a double elbow. And while this rolled up sleeve gets in the way just a bit, that is not bad movement at all. He can come up, touch his face. One of my big gripes with this figure is the wrist, or, well, the way they did the hands, I guess. This is one just, yeah, well, it's rubbery, but it's a solid piece. Under there, there's a peg with a ball joint that, can you move that around? Put it any direction? Yeah, you can twist that inside the arm. But that plugs all the way up there, so once you get that in, it kills a lot of that movement. Over on this side, though, exposed ball joint so you can put that anywhere you want. I'm not quite sure what is going on with the torso. There seems to be either a dumbbell joint or just a ball joint of some kind. With all these pouches, those are plasticky. Here, 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 here. It gets in the way. Can crunch a bit and then arc back. Some tilt, some tilt. Seems to be a ball or a hinge of some kind at the leg comes forward, goes back. The more I've messed with it, the further it seems to go. Maybe I'm loosening up the cloth or the straps or something, but it gets to about right there. There is a swivel up there. I think double knee, but because of the thickness of this knee pad, the right leg goes to about right there. The left leg though, oh, so close. But then you get down to the boot and the same gripe I have about the wrist, I have with the boot because you can pull it off there is a joint down in there, but it goes so deep that it only really gives you this. Mm. Otherwise, just a solid boot, which gets us into accessories. There is an alternate pair of boots where it splits down there. And with the alternate pair of boots, the tops seem to be the exact same piece. I'm not sure if they did that on purpose to avoid confusion of which side's left and right, or I got two rights or two lefts or whatever. But that slips over that piece where the ball joint sticks out the bottom and then you just take the foot pop that on and it's eh, it's fairly secure but that boot is shorter which is why it also comes with a couple of other pieces you can pop this out and then they give you an alternate one that has a spacer in it to give you more height so that goes in there that goes over that then that pops into the foot and that does leave some gap unless you take this pull it back down and then you bring the pants hide that that gives you even more range of movement because it's not forcing this top part down into the bottom and then that ends up the same length as if you were using these or third option you take the solid boot plug it on bring the pants down again to hide that and it makes the figure actually taller i feel like that messes with the proportions a bit though so i'll be using the long pegs but with the articulated ankles. <laughs> so, oh, tweezers. I guess if you wanted Super Rocker, you could turn this sideways and then you have this. The figure also comes with several alternate hands for the human side. There's this relaxed hand. There is a fist. There's a grip type hand for holding things between fingers. And then there is a bent trigger finger hand. For the robot hand side, there's also a relaxed hand there. There's a fist looking hand, but it is open enough to hold another accessory here in a minute. There's a holding the weight of the weapon hand. And then there is a piece on hand and there's actually a slight rubberiness to the hands so that makes changing them out so easy but they also still feel pretty secure when you put them on there pop well i say that i get to this one and it's almost like the top of the glove fights you it pushes it away from the peg i just don't like this setup right here i wish like the boots there were also hands that kind of split right here and the top of the glove was a cuff but not stopping there instead of the red robotic arm there's also a blue one and with that you get a weapon weight holding hand too and then also a peace sign swapping that out it's not as easy as the hands themselves. There's kind of a rectangle peg to it that is really secured on there. But once you get the hang of that, you know how hard to push. Yeah, not bad. And with weapon holding hands, you gotta have weapons. There's this pistol along with a knife and a little sheath for it. It's easy enough to put the gun into the trigger finger hand, but I don't like how the trigger finger hand is in this bent over position. You can't get a straight out shot. This is more of a rifle grip, you know what I mean? So what I've been kind of doing is using this, well, kind of grip hand, but it doesn't have a trigger finger. 
but it does hold it straight out. But if you're wanting to store the pistol, it goes all the way in this holster. And then for the knife, that robotic hand is made to hold that. But if you don't want to use this, here's the tiny little sheath for that. And then what I've been doing with that is slipping it into this loop on the back, pulling the strap to tighten it down, and it holds it okay. Well, it's a loose grip, but it'll work to hide back in there. There's also a tiny watch with a little itty bitty nylon strap. And what I've been doing there is just popping the hand on the robot arm sliding it on there. There's a pair of goggles. It has a nice weathered look to them. There's almost a mud paint job on them. And those slip right over the top of the head, go in front of the eyes. It's crazy how good these look. The same can be said for the night vision goggles. They slip right over the head. The straps look nice and tight. And if you get it in the light just right, it even looks like there's a glimmer of light down at the end of the front of the goggles. Gas mask fits right over the face. Not a problem at all. With that, I do pop the head off and then slip the ponytail through the bigger loop, hold that on, and then the straps are already around the face. And then just put the head on. Yeah, it works. There's also this. Don't do drugs, kids. There is this communicator type device with its own little hologram projection, and that fakes it fairly well. There's a tiny hole in that, and then a peg here, but it doesn't peg tight. It's a loose fit right there. It kind of flops. Yeah. So may need a little tiny bit of poster tack or hell. I doubt if I ever use this without that, so I might as well glue that in at some point. Jumping back over to weapons, there are two different rifles, and I love the detail work on these, both paint and sculpt. There's also this submachine gun with the suppressor and the blue on it. But besides the blue, there's also this subtle gunmetal type look with other paint details that just kick it up a notch. I am a little worried about the plastic used here because there's some flex but I don't want to go too far with it. In fact, I did break the trigger guard earlier. It's still there. You don't even notice it unless I'm pulling on it with these, but there's a fragility, but I'm not super worried about it. Does that make sense? Also putting it in the hand, I did pop this out earlier, but I don't think that's supposed to come out. As for the rifles, again, that's what this bent hand is meant to hold because you put it there and you can kind of hold it off to the side. But also, I did not know until I was grabbing the tweezers to get it out of the tray that it's magnetic. And I don't know if there's something in the back or if it's just magnetizing to these two buckles right here, but you can put that like that. It's not the greatest, but it stays. Well, okay. <laughs> it's actually holding on better than I thought. I think it's just those buckles, but yeah, there's another place to store a weapon. There's also this rocket launcher of some kind, again with the details. I cannot believe. I actually have to get my magnifiers out to look at all the little details here, but the paint, again, it just brings out all that detail and ups the realism a bit. I especially love this plate right here for some reason, but the rocket does come out. The one that was in it in the packet, well, okay, there's a tight spot right there. There was a loose... Oh, if you turn it a certain direction, it just kind of falls out. But there's also a second rocket, and I do believe it's the exact same sculpt. Push that in, and there's a snugness to it that's not just going to fall out. And if that's not enough, there's also this scarf that has two... Well, I have it all twisted up. You'll see that here in a second. But it has two fairly thick wires running down both sides, and that's, again, I have it twisted up to kind of make it look better at this scale. But you can flare it out a bit, have it hanging down over the shoulder, wherever you want to put it. I thought this was going to be a stand-up of some kind, but it's actually a decal that you peel off, and I guess you can stick it to anything you want. But that would make a good background piece of some kind. Because you also have the sneaking box, or a box of some kind that you could use for sneaking. It's a good stock here that once you put it into a position, fold it in, it wants to stay. And I just have this folded in on itself right here. But if you want to fold the bottom up to put it down. Is there someone in there? Snake? Snake! And then finally, there are these things, and there's only two in this baggie right now because I have one in the head. But they gave us the option for three different shrapnel sizes coming out of his forehead, and I, I could have probably done without this. I understand the concept, but oh, I'm getting old, boys. I, again, I had to pull out the magnifiers and the tweezers and fight this thing for probably too long to get this in. But I did get the smallest one in, and that has been in this whole time that I've been reviewing and moving it around and showing articulation. So I'll probably leave that there, but I'm gonna keep these on hand just in case, because if that ever falls out, it's gone. Carpet Monster is just eating that up. And if that happens, I'll go to the medium one and probably glue it in because 
I will never change that out ever again. Oh, I almost forgot about head options. There is an alternate masked head. It's just a, a black leather. It kind of looks gas masky. The gold color to the lenses are very striking. And to swap this out, like I said, most of the time when you pull this off, this cap comes out, but there's also a cap inside the alternate head. So you've got to pull that off and then you put this on the neck ball. But at the same time, that also slides out. So if you need to adjust the height, like put it up higher a bit, you can do that because again, you push it all the way down. It can, where are you going? And it looks a bit like the body swallowing the head. And then there is also the chicken mask. <laughs> and uh, this is probably, well, at least when I saw it back for pre-order last year, this was probably one of the determining factors that made me get the S++. And at first I thought it wouldn't go on with the ponytail and everything, but this is a fairly soft material and I'm almost afraid to put it on because of the damn shrapnel piece, but we're gonna try it. And it just sits on top. It's not meant to be like a skin tight thing, but totally works. And for a throwaway accessory, Look at all the paint work on it. I mean, there's some yellow fading in there and some shade work. Yeah, this is way cooler than it deserves to be. And I gotta back off without, oh, ooh. Ahab stands at about six and three sixteenths inches tall. Here's a couple of other third party figures that I have, Wolfman and the Criminal, and those actually look good together. But if you're wanting to fit Ahab into one of your other lines, here he is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper, the old version, and then the Marvel Legends Black Panther. Here he is next to the Mazco Toys 112th Collective, of Baron Benz and Doc Nocturnal, Mesco runs slightly bigger. Although this isn't bad if you think of this as a helmet skull on Doc Nock. Slightly bigger than the SH Figure Arts Captain Jack and the Mafex Two-Face though, but not too bad with the Marvel Legends MCU figures. So at the end of the day, ah, so much to unpack here. I very rarely say this, but there's almost too much stuff here. And it, that sounds like a gripe. <laughs> I can't keep track of all of it. That's actually a good thing. It gives you lots and lots of options, but oh man, trying to keep track of everything and everything's to scale. And like I said, get some tweezers. Some of these things are so tight tiny, you lose them. You're gonna just, wait, where'd I lay that? Where'd it go? But once you look at the figure and hit that pose and see all the little details and everything, totally worth it. I mean, man, there's a lot going on here. Yes, some frustration, but I think the positives greatly outweigh the negatives here. I wouldn't go cranking on things like arms and joints and weapons and uh, nylon straps and masks and and goggles and yeah like I said there's a lot of stuff but it seems a bit fragile but at the same time I haven't broke anything yet except for that trigger guard on the Uzi or whatever it's called but that shrapnel out of the forehead that can burn in hell I was putting it in this pose and I just thoughtlessly reached up put my thumb right over it tried to move the head around it popped out again but it just fell straight down I got it back in but if it happens again, oh, I swear, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, oh, no, mm. it's glue for you. This is sold out in a lot of places, but if you want to get it, hit up eBay, or I think I saw it on Gian or Gian Toy, something like that. Monkey Depot, I think, still has it in stock. You may have to search around a bit. And it does run $100, but at the same time, like I said, <laughs> there's a lot inside this box. It throws you the size of the box, and then you pull it out, and then you start messing with everything, and you end up with stuff just all over your desk <laughs> which is half the fun so if you enjoyed the review comment like subscribe much much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel patreon.com but wherever you may be watching this I'll always catch you on the foosh i just looked down and realized i had that boot to the side and that would be a problem with a lot of figures but since this is just a cover you just turn it line it back up and the boot looks good <laughs>